I'm going to tie an epoxy ant, and I'm starting off with a size 14 dry fly hook in the vise. I'm going to use two different types of thread, both in the 140 class. The back of this thread is going to be red, so I'll tie that in first. Just get it started on the hook shank and then remove the excess. And now I can start making my ball of thread here towards the back of the fly. And all that I'm doing is making a little bit of a, a taper here to resemble the back section of an ant. One thing you want to be careful of as you tie this in, the higher up the thread ball, the more chances of a thread avalanche. Uh, so just keep applying good consistent pressure to the pattern. You should be all right. Okay, once I'm happy with that, then I'll work my way down to the front of the pattern. And I'll just put in a whip finish here. Make sure you keep good tension on the thread the entire time. So again, so you don't lose control of it. So then I'll clip that and I can come back through with my black and just repeat the process here. I am going to leave um, space here in the in the middle and I'm going to tie in some hackle after I apply my epoxy. So I'm just going to get this get this started on the hook shank as well. And come back through and clean it off. And then I can come back and start to make my head of this pattern, or my thorax. So just repeating the process, and usually I leave my head a little bit smaller than I do the back section. And for the amount of thread that you put on, uh, the epoxy is going to make it uh, a little bit bigger once it, it's on and dried so it'll be a little bit larger than the size that you see with the thread here. So once I'm happy with that then I'll just whip finish. Again keeping good tension on it the entire time and then I'll trim the thread. So I got my general ant shape. Time for the epoxy uh, and you can use a lot of different uh, types of epoxy with this. Um, I'm going to use just a household epoxy and this is a Gorilla Glue uh, and it's a clear. It comes in two parts. So I'll just take a little bit of each and for this smaller pattern a little goes a a, lot, a long way. So I'm just squeezing this out and I like to use um, spoons just because they're disposable and helps keep my amounts consistent. So I'll just take some of this and it'll probably look a little bit milky when you apply it but uh, it'll it'll dry clear so I've got my epoxy and I'll just put a dab on there clean off my excess as I go and I'll just make sure that I coat the threads And I want to make sure that I have that that space in between, so I'll just try to remove some of the excess, push it to to one side or the other.
And when I'm pleased with that, you can set it on uh, a rotator to, to dry, or because of the volume, uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't pool up. I'll sit it here in my vise and just let it um, let it do its thing, and then uh, I'll come back to it when it's dry and wrap in the hackle. So now that my ant has had a chance to set up and cure, I can come back through and attach some hackle to it. So I have swapped out my thread. I'm going to use an A dot black, uh, just because it's a, a thinner diameter for this for this hackle and so I'll get this started on the black I'll come back through and I can trim off the excess and then I can start to wrap in my hackle and for this I've just got a black dry fly hackle I've got it measured out uh, to the same size of the of the hook and so I'm just going to take a small piece of the stem just enough to make sure that it stays put and tie that in and now I can start to make my my wraps through so I'm just gonna bring this up through that middle section make maybe three or four turns and when I get back to my thread then I can wrap that through. I'll trim the excess and then I can whip finish this right where I trimmed it Make sure I don't catch any of those fibers, and now I can trim off the excess. And that is my epoxy amp.